my dear chief hi i visited you this morning my dear ones i have my dear ones are shopping with you this morning my dear children you wonder my dear ones why i do not visit my dear ones babylonian systems my dear children <laughs> they have taken my word my dear children and they have my dear children polluted it i say to you my dear children I have spoken to Luda my dear children and I have spoken to my all my prophets my dear children and I am speaking to my dear saints my dear children in this last hour time I speak to my ministry also my dear children I have a very little time my dear children I am my dear children going to move over my dear children but I speak to my gentile bride this morning Take it, my dear children. The hour is late, my dear children. And I am going to move upon you, my dear children. Do not be dismayed, my dear children. I have something stored for you, my dear ones. Not even Satan knows, my dear children. But I will surely move upon your lives, my dear children. Let's say the Lord. Hey. Amen. Our mother prayer can lead us to pray this morning. Hallelujah Lord
join me in singing this song, my brothers and sisters. I may have forgot the words. Oh, what a wonderful, wonderful day, the day I will never forget. After I wandered in darkness away, Jesus, my Savior, I met. Oh, what a tender, compassionate friend. He met the needs of my heart. Sorrows dispelling with joy, I am telling. He bade all my darkness depart. Oh, heavens came down and glory filled my soul. Yes, he filled my soul. There at the cross, my Savior made me whole. My sins were washed away, and my night was turned to day. Surely endure after the passing of time. I have a future in heaven for sure, there in that mansion sublime. All because of that wonderful day when at the cross I believe. Jesus eternal and joy forever all in Jesus I receive oh heaven came down and glory filled my soul yes he filled my soul there at the cross my savior made me whole oh he made me whole my sins were washed away and my night was turned to day heavens came down and glory filled my soul now I have hope that will surely endure after the passing of time I have a future in heaven for sure, there in that mansion sublime, all because of that wonderful day, when at the cross I believe, riches eternal and joy forever, all in Jesus I receive. Oh, heavens came down and glory filled my soul. Yes, he filled my soul. There at the cross, my Savior made me whole. Yes, he made me whole. And my sins were washed away. And my night was turned to day. Heavens came down. Truly a wonderful day, my brothers and sisters, when Jesus entered into our lives and changed our lives inside out. It is such a wonderful experience. You know, <clears throat> when that joy of heaven hits your soul, you just want to, you know, like my brother said, he went in a classroom and he couldn't hold himself, you know. You know, that's what happens to you when that power of the Holy Spirit comes into your life. I just want to thank God for that wonderful day. I want to thank him for bringing us thus far, my brothers and sisters. I want to thank him that, uh, you know, if you're lost in this world, you always look around, you look for a crowd somewhere where, you know, people are going in a certain direction. But I thank God, you know, he said, uh, 
The narrow way, my brothers and sisters, where few will be found, my brothers and sisters. So it doesn't hurt us, my brothers and sisters, that we are a few people, my brothers and sisters. But I thank God for the genuine word of God, my brothers and sisters, that he has given us. I just want to bless him and give him all glory, honor, and praise. I'm thankful to see each one of you here, my brothers and sisters. You know, always uh, when I came to church as a young boy, I always looked at the elderly people that came to church. And like, uh, I didn't see Jesus, and I didn't know Jesus at that time in the way I know him today. But when I looked at uh, the older folks, I got like uh, confidence because I could see the love of Jesus in their life. Uh, and uh, they were carrying Jesus in them. And that's what gave me confidence and hope at that time. But I later realized that I had to have an experience with Jesus myself. And uh, I thank God, my brothers and sisters, that we are all still here. Uh, we may be gone gray and lost some teeth and all those things maybe befell us in our life my friends our bodies may not be the same but I'm so grateful that we are uh, not a inconsistent people we have seen a light my friends sisters God has shown us something and that something that he placed inside our heart is what keeps us from day to day my friends sisters and I'm so grateful for that, my brothers and sisters. May we also be a light to all those, my brothers and sisters, that are young and those that are upcoming, my brothers and sisters. Let them see Jesus in our life, my brothers and sisters. Let us shine that light brighter and brighter. We may not be a minister. All of us may not be ministers, my brothers and sisters. But somewhere, my brothers and sisters, our life will speak out, my brothers and sisters. Our example. The Bible says we must be a living epistle, read of all men, my brothers and sisters. I just want to give him all glory today, all honor. I wonder if Sister Jean's got a song this morning. <clears throat> Brother Francis, you can get to the next. Bless them each and every one this morning. <clears throat> and I thank God for all his goodness and mercy towards us. My brothers and sisters, um, I want to thank God because he made a way for my son's children uh, to be uh, with Naomi for the Easter weekend. And I thank God and uh, my brothers and sisters, she's going to take care of them for the weekend and holiday times they'll be with her. I thank God for making a way because we are far. And also I thank the Lord uh, for helping Brother Chase. Uh, I took him to the doctor and the doctor said he got a spine problem. <clears throat> he was very sick for one week, my brothers and sisters. But I want to give God all praise and honor to his wonderful name. God makes a way where there's no way. We only got to trust and put our faith in him. Jesus, wonderful. <clears throat> Why should I feel the scourge? And why should the shadow come? And why should my heart? Thank you. 
And praise the name of the Lord this crucifixion morning, brothers and sisters. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the name. Amen. I normally sing this song for my little granddaughter, Francis, and somewhat she just uh, quietens down and falls off to sleep. <laughs> I want to just praise the Lord this morning. Nanme yodi nyan sturi padi dum yende Yeshu nada yene kya ni chidoru nanme kum yenu nanme Sturi padi dum yende Yeshu nada yene kya ni chidoru nan mekum inu nan ni chulnya adi kya. Yeah, then I'm 
Greet you all in the precious name of Jesus. To the saint and the sinner, the losers and winners, sometimes the rain's gonna fall. All the bad and the good and the misunderstood. Storms will come to us all. Well, I found the answer from heartache to cancer. I thank him in spite of the pain. Cause when I start praising, things begin changing by learning to dance in the rain. I'm learning to smile when I feel like crying to live every day. As if I were dying, I'm learning the lesson of praising God through the pain. I'm learning to stand when my 
There's no silver lining in sight When your praise have been prayed And the answer's delayed And you're holding on for dear life Whether you walk on water Or if you falter He'll be there when you call His name And you'll get the victory And you'll solve the mystery By learning to dance in the rain I'm learning to smile When I feel like crying To live every day As if I were dying
Amen. I want to greet you all in the lovely name of Jesus Christ. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful this morning, dear God, that we can gather in your presence, Lord. You are the God that has watched over the lives of your children, Lord. You see every heart, you see every mind, my God. Lord, you see the desires of your people, my God. I pray that you will touch those, Lord, that have come here, my God. Whatever their needs can be, my God. I pray that your nail-pierced hands will touch and deliver them, my God. Even for those in faraway lands, Lord on the beds of affliction and other places, my God, minister to them, my Father. Lord, we bring your word before you, my God. I pray that you will anoint your word, my God. Take these lips, let something be said, my God, that shall be beneficial to your children living at this late hour, my God. We come at this service now in your hands. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning, my brothers and sisters. We want to thank the Lord for His wonderful grace and mercy in our lives. We thank the Lord that His Son was sent into this world 2,000 years ago, the perfect Lamb of God, my brothers and sisters, that took our place on Calvary so that we could be set free. This morning we have a message, we're entitling it, God spared not his own son. God spared not his own son. Now, my brothers and sisters, in the past messages, uh, we have uh, related, my brothers, how the Apostle Paul, my brothers and sisters, was used instrumentally by God uh, to be able to paint a picture, my brothers and sisters, uh, of what really happened on Calvary. Because uh, the Roman world and the Judaistic world at that time, they only saw a man, uh, brothers and sisters, crucified. But his purpose and the reason that he had come into the world uh, remained unknown to the individuals. And my brothers and sisters, we realize that after 2,000 years that Jesus has come into this world, there's a religious world out there that knows very little of what had uh, really taken place uh, on that day, my brothers and sisters, uh, to set man free. That is why, brothers and sisters, uh, we know that uh, the Jews uh, actually uh, celebrate their Passover uh, in April, that's next month. Uh, we know this is not the day that Jesus was crucified. Uh, but my brothers and sisters, but it gives us time to be able to reflect back on what happened 2,000 years ago. And we know, brothers and sisters, the commercial world makes big money out of all of these things. Uh, that is why you have, uh, you know, I like odd cross buns, but uh, brothers and sisters, there's no salvation in that. Brothers and sisters, if you watch carefully, that uh, odd cross buns uh, is not uh, divided like the cross. You don't see any, maybe if you do it privately, but brothers and sisters, it's made into four squares. The cross is made in such a way because uh, it is to typify not the cross of Christ really. Brothers and sisters, uh, it's to typify the four seasons uh, that are in the world. Because my brothers and sisters, uh, they worship the goddess uh, of spring. Brothers and sisters, when life comes upon the earth. Same with the I don't know, brothers and sisters, what bunnies have got anything to do with Easter, with the resurrection, brothers and sisters, uh, because actually it's worshipping the God of fertility, because you and I know if you had rabbits, brothers and sisters, uh, they produce in mass. So it's worshipping the God of fertility. 
brothers and sisters, uh, and the same way with all these traditional things uh, that is on the face of the earth, uh, but nothing will take the place of the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed uh, 2,000 years ago uh, for our benefits. My brothers and sisters, that is why we don't serve a traditional God. Uh, these holidays, brothers and sisters, is for commercial purposes, uh, but uh, we worship the true and living God. So we look at the subject this morning, God spared not his own son. My brothers and sisters, um, God being God, if he wanted to, he could have spared his son. Because his son, Jesus Christ, uh, asked his father, Lord, if it be your will, uh, let this cup pass for me. But let it not be my will, but your will. So brothers and sisters, uh, he made a request to his father. But brothers and sisters, uh, he wanted to be in his father's perfect will. And uh, if there was another way around this, uh, God could have done it. But there was no other way around this because uh, somebody had to take your place and my place. Uh, not an angel, uh, not an animal, my brothers and sisters, uh, but another perfect son of God uh, would be the only one that could pay the price. Uh, so we see, brothers and sisters, uh, the Apostle Paul, he writes in Romans 8, 31, What shall we say to these things? My brothers and sisters, uh, the Christian walk of life is not a bed of roses. Brothers and sisters, no way do you read in the scriptures, well, if you become a Christian, uh, everything is just going to work out fine for you. But brothers and sisters, uh, there's a lot of things that may come in our pathway of life. And uh, the Apostle Paul was uh, talking about those things uh, in Romans chapter 8. And then he says, uh, what shall we say uh, to these things? Uh, whatever things you can talk about, uh, your trials, your tests, uh, your problems, uh, heartaches, accidents, uh, brothers, uh, whatever it can be. He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? That is the most important thing. God is on our side. And as long as God is for us, then who or what can be against us? He that spared not his own son. It was not another man's son. It was God's only begotten son. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him, that's Jesus Christ, also freely give us all things? My brothers and sisters, we realize <laughs> the Father can only give us things through his only begotten son, Jesus Christ. Because uh, he paid the price. He was the perfect sacrifice. Uh, and his blood was shed, uh, brothers and sisters, in exchange uh, for our forgiveness and our salvation. So the Apostle Paul, uh, he was not writing this, uh, brothers, without any confidence. He was confident about his salvation and our salvation as well. And that is why uh, he said, uh, if God spared not his son, then how much more will he not uh, give us all things uh, freely? So he says that if God be for us, who or what can be against us? My brothers and sisters, uh, we don't serve a dead God. We don't serve an idol. We don't serve a statue or, I would say, uh, a false God. We serve a true and living God. And if He is for us, then, my brothers and sisters, uh, Paul says, who or what can be against us? He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? So Paul, brothers and sisters, uh, God took him as a man, brothers and sisters, uh, to expound and I would say uh, clear the picture that there wasn't just another human being that died on Calvary. That was God's only begotten son. That is why we said last week, Jesus asked Peter, who do men say that I am? And Peter knew, brothers and sisters, uh, 
that Jesus was uh, the Christ, the true Messiah, the son of the living God. So we're going to go back a little. Jesus Christ has just come from the wilderness. In Luke chapter 4 and verses 16. It says, and he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Brothers, Jesus has spent 30 years of his life. There wasn't one single miracle that he did in the first 30 years of life. Because my brothers, he was raised up to be the perfect human son of God. And God had not yet incarnated him. Therefore, there's no written records of any miracles that Jesus has done. If actually he administered himself in a supernatural way, this Bible would have been too small to be written. Because only three and a half years of his life, look at what has been written. So, brothers and sisters, uh, he was baptized and God incarnated him. And my brothers and sisters, he was taken into the wilderness He's come down from the wilderness now, empowered by God. And my brothers and sisters, uh, the first thing he does, he goes into the synagogue uh, on the Sabbath day. And he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read. Brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus was not like a seminary preacher. Brothers and sisters, he was uh, not someone that had to be tutored uh, I would say the theologians of his day. Brothers and sisters, he was tutored by his father. No doubt uh, Mary taught him, uh, brothers and sisters, the Hebrew language. But my brothers and sisters, when he went to to that synagogue and stood up to to read, it said, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. Remember, there was a lot of books. The Torah was, uh, brothers and sisters, more than one book. But on that particular day, brothers and sisters, uh, that scroll uh, of Isaiah was delivered to him. And it says, and when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. My brothers and sisters, uh, it wasn't like how someone would open the Bible and just the first scripture that comes, he was going to preach out of. Brothers and sisters, the Bible says uh, he found the place where it was written. And brothers and sisters, uh, there you can see how the scroll was given to him and he finds the place where it was written. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He had sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and the recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised. My brothers and sisters, the scribes and the Pharisees had read this text many times. But my brothers and sisters, uh, they couldn't point to who this text was relevant to. But brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus Christ was not somebody that didn't know what his purpose was. Brothers and sisters, he knew exactly why he had come into this universe. Brothers and sisters, and was born. And my brothers and sisters, uh, he was uh, recorded in the scriptures uh, what uh, his job was going to be. And my brothers and sisters, uh, as the audience of that hour listened uh, to him talk out of this scripture, it was a scripture that was related not to another generation, but to him. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. That is what made him Christ. Because prior to that, he was just Jesus, uh, the perfect son of God. But when he was incarnated by God, uh, the spirit came upon him to be able to do uh, that work. And that is why Jesus is saying, uh, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So brothers and sisters, uh, 
Now Jesus for 30 years he not performed any miracles but now as he comes on the scene uh, the spirit of the Lord has anointed him and it's anointed him for a divine purpose uh, to preach the good news uh, not really just to the elite of that day brothers and sisters uh, but to the spiritually poor he had sent me to heal the broken hearted Brothers and sisters, uh, that which the devil had messed the lives uh, of, I would say, humankind. He was to put the pieces together. How, brothers and sisters, uh, by preaching to them that he is uh, that perfect sacrifice shortly that was going to pay the price uh, so that the sins of the world could be forgiven. To preach deliverance to the captives. And the recovering of sight to the blind. Brothers, uh, that was yes done naturally, but both spiritually, that inner eye had to be open to the true word of God. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. So brothers and sisters, whatever your category could be, brothers and sisters, uh, I would say uh, in what that verse of scripture has spoken the Holy Ghost is still here today to do the same work in anyone's life. Because remember, brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus is not here physically, but the same spirit that anointed him is the same spirit uh, that is still in the bride of Jesus Christ. Uh, brothers and sisters, not pointing them to an old cross banner or to a bunny or, or all of that, uh, but to show them what happened on Calvary, what was the purpose uh, that Jesus came into this world. And so brothers and sisters. Uh, he said um, also. To preach. The acceptable year of the Lord. Brothers and sisters. Uh, you and I Gentiles. We don't know what that word really means. But if you had asked a Jew of his hour. Brothers and sisters. Uh, they knew the types and the shadows uh, in the Bible. And they knew, brothers and sisters, there was a thing uh, as the jub jubilee year. Brothers and sisters, uh, that if somebody, had, uh, because he became poor, lost his property, or he became a, a uh, servant, or, or he became a slave, after 50 years, brothers and sisters, the, the priest would blow the horn and say now, uh, no matter what had happened in your life, no matter how much in debt you got, no matter your property was sold away, no matter you became a slave, when you hear that sound, you drop the hall, you break the chain, you tell your landlord goodbye, I have been set free, the price has been paid. Now my brothers and sisters, uh, for 1,400 years, they have been just preaching that or t talking about that uh, just from a natural point. Uh, they got the property back, they got the fa farm back, the sons came back, their husbands came back. But they were still in spiritual bondage. And my brothers and sisters, uh, Jesus had not come in that hour to preach the acceptable year or the year of God's favor or the jubilee year. He came to declare, I've now come to tell you, I am setting you free by what I'm going to do at Calvary. That is what the acceptable year, yeah it says here, but it doesn't mean 365 and a quarter days. It means uh, that period of time that we know as the grace age brothers and sisters uh, where the gospel of grace was preached. So when Jesus stood there that day, he was, uh, I would say, pressed by God to find the place uh, where it is recorded. It's not opening to the types and shadows that you find in the book of Leviticus. But he opens to Isaiah 61 because uh, it's the fulfillment of that type. Brothers and sisters, uh, because uh, he was the instrument that God would use uh, to liberate every child that needs to be liberated. That's why it says uh, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So brothers and sisters, uh, when that priest, 
blew the trumpet in the year of the Jubilee, brothers and sisters said, every man or woman that heard that trumpet, brothers and sisters said, could just drop everything. Now my brothers, for 2,000 years, that gospel trumpet has been blowing through the ministry, the preachers, brothers and sisters and souls have been set free. We all came via listening to the oracles of God's word. One day you came to know that a man died for your sins and that you could go free. His precious blood was shed and my brothers and sisters, but we know that shortly, brothers, uh, this gospel is going to go over to the Jews, uh, but Jesus uh, as it left that mercy seat, there's still available, I would say, uh, grace for a child. But my brothers, when Jesus stood there in that synagogue that day, he was not scared. He wasn't saying, well, I don't know if the scripture uh, ties up to me or points to me. Brothers, he was confident that that scripture was pointing to him. And my brothers, we see how he talks. And he closed the book. Plus, he didn't need to read five, six chapters. He, clo- he read that verses. He closed the book. And he gave it again to the minister. And he sat down. Brothers and sisters, uh, imagine. Brothers and sisters, how authoritative he was. That he could do that. And the Bible says... Uh, and the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were faster than him. They never heard a preacher or a man look for the scripture, read it, brothers and sisters, and then close the book and sit down. And my brothers and sisters, the Bible says, and he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture. This scripture fulfilled, not before your eyes, in your ears. Because, brothers and sisters, if all they heard was just the verbal words of Jesus, and they didn't catch the meaning, that, yeah, you have been looking for this promise for almost thousands of years, and you read Isaiah all the time, Leviticus all the time, and yeah, the man is standing and you do not know uh, it's being fulfilled before you. Your ears need to catch the word, and understanding has to come forth, and then uh, you can see the picture. And my brothers and sisters, um, if that particular scripture was fulfilled in that way, then what about scriptures for our day and our time? Brothers and sisters, the world is watching, and they are looking. Brothers and sisters, what's happening in Israel? And uh, they're scratching the head. They see this bridge that fell off there in, uh, I think, Baltimore, brothers and sisters, uh, in uh, the United States. Well, uh, yes, it may just, uh, our hearts go out for the souls that have died there. It shouldn't have happened. But brothers and sisters, there's blame that is to be laid before. Brothers and sisters, uh, I would say the leadership of that hour. That is there. Well, you say, well, brother, how do you know? You know when that happened that day? Brothers and sisters, and a, a day before that, I think, the United States of America, brothers and sisters, uh, the vote that they could have protected Israel by, they abstained from that vote. And my brothers and sisters, they threw Israel under the bus. And this uh, bridge, brothers, is the eastern corridor of all the ships that go uh, into the eastern part of America. And uh, I just have to cut short what I'm saying, but brothers and sisters, I just walked and, and something spoke in my mind and said, shipwrecked. And my brothers and sisters, but I, I, I couldn't just tie it in my mind. And my brothers and sisters, and the scriptures began to flow. Remember Josephus? Brothers and sisters, uh, he was a godly king, and the United States of America is a Christian nation. But uh, he went uh, and he fought alongside uh, and he joined up with Ahab. 
brothers and sisters, and when he came back, uh, the prophet told him, said, you shouldn't have made affinity with evil. And my brothers and sisters, the United States of America has made affinity with, I would say, the evil powers uh, that are resident in the Middle East and around this world. And you know what happened? Joseph had made uh, hundreds and hundreds of ships to be able to bring his cargo in and out. And read, the ships were all shipwrecked. Brothers and sisters, this is only a tip of the iceberg. And my brothers and sisters, you don't play with the nation of Israel. He that blessed Israel shall be blessed. But you abstain your vote when you're supposed to protect them. There's going to come God takes his hand off. And my brothers and sisters, a ship that was a boat or whatever it was, uh, was going in a certain direction, suddenly turns around, the lights go off, the power goes off, and knocks the, the main pillar. And watch how that bridge comes down. Now this again I say, my heart goes out for those families. They shouldn't have died that way. The six or eight members. But brothers and sisters, uh, we have to understand that God is watching the picture very carefully. Therefore, that scripture in that day, Jesus knew exactly, brothers and sisters, that this scripture is fulfilled before your eyes. And this morning, I could take many scriptures that have been fulfilled before our ears and our eyes in this time. And the religious world will go on eating their bunnies and uh, brothers and sisters or cross buns. Uh, and next year comes, that is exactly what they'll do again. Nothing wrong with that. I enjoy them myself, but brothers and sisters, our mind and system has to go more than that. This day, this scripture is fulfilled. And my brothers and sisters, uh, we see now that Jesus was confident because that was not the only scripture that he read. He also knew that there was an Isaiah 53 that we read about. Who had believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? You see, brothers, the reports or the scriptures that are lying in the word of God. Brothers and sisters, they hear it. But who has believed that report? And my brothers, sir, you cannot believe the report unless the arm of the Lord is revealed or God, through his revelated arm, opens the understanding of that word to give you the ability to have trust and faith. Because if you don't understand something, you can't have faith in anything. Brothers and sisters, uh, if I don't know Ashley, where he stays, his life, or whatever, it, brothers, if he just comes like a fly by night, I can't trust him if he tells me he's going to do something. But because I've seen him do certain things and know how he's done it, when he says he's going to do it, I can trust him because I know about him. So, when if you don't understand something, then who had believed our report? And my brothers and sisters, Isaiah 53 was the report. My brothers and sisters, sir, we know it was written almost 700 years before Jesus Christ ever came on the scene. We'll read it in the other scriptures. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Brothers and sisters, uh, 700 and some years before the crucifixion took place, Isaiah is taken uh, to the time when the crucifixion is to take place. And the disciples, brothers and sisters, who will be standing there, actually, brothers and sisters, uh, is seeing, uh, I would say, firsthand what was written in the scriptures a long time ago. He is despised. Brothers, the Roman world and the Judaistic world, they despised him. He is a man rejected of men, 
a man of sorrows, brothers and sisters, it wasn't because uh, he'd done anything. But when he stood there that day and he cried over Jerusalem, he wasn't crying for himself. When he cried uh, with the women, brothers and sisters, uh, that were crying for him as he took the cross up, brothers, sir, he was a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Brothers, he knew that is why today he can be the faithful high priest that is touched by the feeling of our infirmities. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Brothers and sisters, uh, our minds cannot envision the brutality that Jesus suffered. Brothers and sisters, uh, you see what they did to the terrorists uh, in, uh, in, in Russia, the fall. Brothers and sisters, uh, they almost, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, hit every part of the face. Uh, brothers, this, you, when you look at it, your face wants to turn away from it. And that's what he's talking when they saw Jesus. We hid, we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. But surely he had borne our griefs. Brothers, when you're going through a trying time, when you lost a loved one or you lost something of value, brothers and sisters, and you go through griefs and we all go through that from time to time. But we've got to realize, brothers, here was a man who did not need to be grieved. He did not need to die. But brothers and sisters, uh, he carried all that weight and he took all that punishment. Brothers and sisters, uh, so that brothers and sisters, the word surely can be written here. That's a guaranteed word. He had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. In other words, we looked at him. And he said, well, three and a half years, he was the talk of the town. Three and a half years, everybody thought, surely he's the king. But now, it seems like God's forsaken him. God's left him. Because uh, no, God is no way on the scene. But brothers and sisters, he was to be that perfect sacrifice. He was to bear that punishment on our behalf. Brothers and sisters, because uh, we re <coughs> realize that somebody else had to take it so that we don't need uh, to pay the punishment for our sin. We still go through trials and tests, but brothers and sisters, uh, his life was given in exchange for ours. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Brothers and sisters, if Jesus Christ had not paid the price for you and I, you can have all the money in the world, you can have all the gold in the world and all the tranquilizers. You're not going to make peace with God. Peace can only come between God and man through an atonement. Atone means uh, something that pacifies. Something that satisfies. And Jesus was uh, the pacifying, the satisfying, calming atonement for God. In the sense that when he sees sin, he sees somebody else took the price. So that his justice inside of him doesn't need uh, to get angry. But now it is calm and his only begotten son. Brothers and sisters, was that atonement. He was the perfect atoning sacrifice for us. That is why the chastisement of our peace, or he was chastised so that we can have peace with God. Brothers and sisters, that is why we can take that word surely as a guarantee that he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. In other words, he also paid the price that if we should go through something, then we can go to God and say, Lord, the price has been paid for our healing. That is why we see that whipping post. Brothers and sisters, 
None of it was for himself. Brothers and sisters, he bore the punishment. And my brothers and sisters, that is why when the Bible says, we hid our face from him. Brothers, you will never be able to envision what really was the blood, bloody body of Jesus Christ. How much of flesh was taken out? How much of bones, brothers and sisters, was, I would say, seen as the flesh was pulled out? But we thank God, the Bible tells us, brothers and sisters, that when they came to Jesus Christ, he was already dead. Therefore, they didn't need to break his bones. Brothers and sisters, but we have to understand that whipping post was supposed to be what you and I would need to suffer as punishment if a perfect son of God had not paid the price. So the Bible says, and all we like sheep have gone astray. Brothers and sisters, that's the picture before you became a child of God. If God left us, brothers and sisters, when we were born in sin and shape and in iniquity, we would have went all our own ways. God only know where you would be today. Brothers and sisters, but it took the redeeming power of God to get a hold of your life and bring you onto the pathway of Jesus Christ. But prior to that, you and I know, brothers and sisters, uh, uh, whenever God touched you, if you look just a few days prior to that, you were running your own way. Brothers and sisters, uh, uh, I, I was seven years old or six, uh, some, something to that. What was I doing? Brothers, in those days, we didn't have modernistic uh, technology, uh, brothers, cell phones and all of that. You had cotton reels. You had rubber tires. That was your toy. And you spent your day, brothers and sisters, either playing with that kind of toys or playing marbles. If God left us, brothers, we don't know what we would have went that way. But brothers and sisters, uh, as sure as gold, God changed our life. The same with every one of us. Brothers and sisters, uh, all we like sheep, because sheep don't know the direction. A shepherd leaves them in a pasture. Brothers, he has to guide them or have a dog to bring them back. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And even sometimes after we become a Christian, uh, this flesh wants us to go our own way. You try to talk to individuals, well, you can say, no, well, I'll have it my way. But brothers, if you're a true child of God, God knows how to turn it around and lead you God's way. But we are thankful for the grace. It says, and the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Brothers and sisters, uh, God, he was the one that put the iniquity on the Lord Jesus Christ. And therefore, he looked upon us as one that he could forgive us. That is the difference. Brothers and sisters, we are not only forgiven, but the Bible tells us we are justified. Meaning, my brothers and sisters, uh, that we have the righteousness uh, of Jesus Christ, of God, in the sense that when God put the iniquity of us on Jesus Christ, the righteousness that was in Jesus was imputed to us. So that, brothers and sisters, uh, we can read that scripture, the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all, and when we accept Jesus Christ, we receive his righteousness. So we see Paul, that scriptures was there, and many more scriptures. And my brothers, Paul had read the scriptures all the time, but he had to be taken to the Arabian desert so that he can read the scriptures and see what is it to the meaning of every child of God. That is why we read last week that the eyes of your understanding may be opened to know what is uh, the hope that you've been called to. So brothers and sisters, Paul goes further in Colossians now. He says, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who raised him from the dead. 
Brothers and sisters, when you become a child of God and you are baptized, it's not a Catholic ritual that we do. It is an ordinance, ordinance of God that we see what happened to Jesus Christ. That he was crucified and we were crucified with him. The Bible says, like Paul says, together. Brothers and sisters, we are buried in a watery grave in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our past sins have been washed away in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we rise up in the newness of life because you are now a candidate to receive that new life, the power of the Holy Ghost uh, inside your being. And you, see Paul, it's just like how Jesus asked Peter, who do men, who do you say that I am? And so Paul says, and you, being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, Brothers and sisters, Paul is elaborating. When Jesus died on Calvary, it was not just him paying a price or he did something with the Romans. It is the plan and the purpose that God designed so that you and I can be brought into the kingdom and we can be able to now go free and have a free conscience and a free mind to approach God. And so brothers he says. He had quickened. He has made us alive. Together with him. That is why suddenly we. Have been born into the family of God. Brothers when you become a child of God. We don't sit here. Well you know I came from. The Baptist. Well you know I still keep a little bit of Baptist with me. Or Presbyterian. Or Methodist. Or I was going to the temple here. And you didn't. Brothers. All that goes aside. You come into the family of God. You're quickened by the same spirit. And that spirit is to open up the word of God to your heart and mind. That is why at this late hour, brothers, you don't have to preach length and breadth to tell individuals what we're living in time because you see the same news that I see. And my brothers and sisters, but we just have to realize the world is pulling at this extent, to just try and pacify every, everything. Well, you know, everything is just fine. Brothers and sisters, uh, when that bridge came down, the world stood in awe. They didn't know how come. But you know, brothers and sisters, a few hours prior to that, when we saw what they did to Israel, Amen. we knew that something is coming. Right. Brothers and sisters, not that we wanted it or we happy about it, but brothers and sisters, we're living too late an hour. We've got to understand, man has been given time to see what was done in the scriptures for their salvation. So when he was upon that cross, Paul is saying, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he took it out of the way, Nailing it to the cross. In other words, brothers, uh, normally when somebody is sentenced to death, they can write your debt. This man is being sentenced to death. Uh, this is what he's done. This is his judgment. But brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ didn't do anything wrong. Brothers, he was the, they put that he, this is the king of the Jews. He was the son of God. But brothers and sisters, he took all of our debt. He nailed it to the cross. And through his blood, he canceled it. That is why he said, it is finished. And my brothers, Paul is the one uh, that is taking from the Old Testament. That is why Paul was given the chance. He could have said, uh, this is your year of jubilee. In other words, uh, now is the horn being blown that you are debt free, you're no more a slave, and uh, Jesus Christ paid the price. And my brothers and sisters, uh, so Paul says, blotting out or canceling or cleansing or washing away. Brothers and sisters, we see them. 
It says, God wiped out the charges that were against us for disobeying the law of Moses. He took them away and nailed them to the cross. That's what Paul, brothers and sisters, is elaborating. Because he was a student under Gamaliel. He knew exactly what each of those types and shadows uh, portrayed. And he said, uh, Jesus, when he carried the cross, brothers and sisters, uh, it wasn't so much the heaviness of the cross that made him fall so many times. Brothers and sisters, the weight of the sin of this world of unbelief and doubt. And my brothers and sisters, now that we come to this ending point, brothers and sisters, that is why Brother Branham preached. He pointed to that many times, but in the end he said, I indict this present generation for the second crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Well, he said, well, where's the second crucifixion? I don't see it. But brothers and sisters, uh, they took the word, which is Jesus Christ, the truth of his word. And when you preach that word, they say, away with this man. Away with that truth. That's the same thing they're doing today. Brothers, take the word of God and point them in this end time that God was to send a messenger. God was to have, a, I would say, a fivefold ministry. And there needed to be further truth. Brothers, as long as you stick with an outdated truth, they welcome you. Brothers and sisters, as long as the churches today supply uh, with uh, you know, chocolates and Easter bunnies and all the rest, they'll welcome you. They'll all go to church. But preach the unadulterated virgin word of God away with him. That's why Brother Branham said, I have the right to indict this generation. For the second crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And my brothers and sisters, that is why the religious world is watching all of this that is happening. And my brothers, there's going to be a rude awakening for this generation. When that Middle East is going to shake. And my brothers and sisters, there's not going to be just one bridge come down. Brothers and sisters, that bridge that was built... It took about five to six years initially to build it. Cost about two to three billion rands. And my brothers and sisters, to save face, the president stood a few hours later and he said, uh, we will pay for it. And we'll fix it. But brothers and sisters, when they really go back, It's going to take three to five years to put it back again. And what's going to happen to your cargo in the meanwhile? Brothers, remember this is not straw. This is concrete. that has to be dug out, removed. And my brothers and sisters, it will take a long time to put back again. And every door you try to close to the nation of Israel, God's going to close your doors. Brothers and sisters, uh, this is the eastern horizon. California is the western horizon. And they're basically doing the same things, uh, brothers and sisters. uh, But I pray that God will have mercy upon the true children of God and preserve them and protect them. Because Jesus died uh, for the world, brothers and sisters. He shed his blood uh, so that man can go free. That they can have an opportunity to come back to Christ. And when that horn is blown, to recognize I am set free through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that is why I can thank God in this hour of time. That brothers and sisters, uh, we can thank our Savior that came to this world. Paid the price for us. And my brother uh, slowly, surely, is opening his word to show us where we are in time. So let's... Thank him for what he's done and what he's doing. And he will continue to lead us and guide us along this way. Let's stand to our feet today. Heavenly Father, we are a thankful people to be living at this hour of time. Lord, we watch the world. We see how they are drifting. 
Lord, day by day, into unbelief and doubt, that they cannot open your precious word, Lord, and see the reality of your word. But I pray this morning for every soul that has come here, Lord. If there's a child, Lord, that is standing in some need of prayer, Lord, I pray as they raise their hands to you, that you will touch them and you will minister to them, dear God. You will set them free, Lord, from every bondage of the devil. Lord, break all their shackles, my God, and set them free, dear God, from every sin that the enemy has brought their way, my God. May they realize, Lord, the blood of Jesus Christ is still as true today as it was in the past. Lord, let them go from this place, Lord, a liberated people that knows Jesus Christ in reality, my God. I commit every child into your hands. Bless us now, Father. We ask these mercies in the name of Jesus Christ uh, and for your glory while we sing a song. Uh, amen and amen. Amen. I cannot comprehend the price my Savior paid to redeem me from the bonds of sin. So I could live again From my mind I could not erase The beauty that my Savior paid Just thinking what he's done for me Oh, just thinking what he done for me Oh, without Him I don't know where I'd be A walk comes over my soul And the tears begin to flow Just thinking what is done for me His plan has not ended yet He said it come again He's gone to prepare a place So I could live again When I my trials yet cannot compare Just thinking what is done for me Oh, just thinking what is done for me Just thinking what is done. 